I'm John Connerup, the Mission Director of the Baptist Bible Fellowship International. Thank you for joining me today for our 938 podcast. We have this podcast that goes out twice a month, and we cover many things considering missions. We interview missionaries from around the world and uh, a lot of different top topics that I think you'll find interested interesting. So if you haven't seen all of them, go back to our YouTube channel at BBFI Missions and watch them and catch up on, on all of the podcasts that we've had. Otherwise, we'd like you to subscribe to this and even share uh, what you're seeing on this 938 podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about our 938 docu-series. And so these are documentaries of missionaries that are a part of our docu-series. The first one uh, was of Marjorie Browning. Marjorie Browning served as our missionary in Brazil for over 50 years. She was a single missionary lady, went out to a very remote place of Brazil and worked with some churches, uh, training women and children, leading many of them to Christ, living very remotely. It's an amazing story. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I think you would enjoy it. And you can go to our website, project938.world, and you'll be able to see the documentary on Marjorie Browning. The second one is of Laverne Rogers. Laverne Rogers uh, was a missionary in Japan. And if you want to talk about or think about faithfulness, a faithful servant over a long term, this would be the person you would think about. Laverne Rogers was a missionary in Japan for 72 years. Went right after World War II and served there, led many people to Christ, started churches, trained many national leaders who have gone on and done more there in Japan. So it's an amazing story. You can also find that at our uh, 938, uh, project938.world uh, site, and I think you'll enjoy it. Now we're working on our third one, and our third one is going to be on Richard Connerup. Richard Connerup happens to be my dad. My mom and dad went to Ethiopia as pioneer missionaries in, in 1960. They lived in a tent for two years. Uh, they were out in very remote areas with remote uh, locations and livings uh, set up that I think you'll find very interesting and fascinating. Uh, as kids, we went to boarding school. That's what most of the missionary kids did. And so it goes through and tells their story in those early years through Ethiopia. Uh, there's even eight miller eight millimeter movies uh, that my dad took back in the day, and you'll be able to see some of those as well. And then the story goes on because communism came to Ethiopia. We had to go and leave, and then go to the country of Kenya, uh, just south of Ethiopia. And uh, the story continues there in the work of my parents. Uh, my dad served as a missionary for 58 years in East Africa. And so I'm really liking the way that this documentary is coming together. Our media depart department's doing an amazing job taking all the pictures and 8 millimeter footage and old videos and things, putting it all together with a great storyline. I think you will really enjoy it. Now, that uh, docuseries is going to be ready sometime in the first week of September, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But right now, I'd like you to watch the uh, trailer of that documentary on Richard Connerup. With a life fully dependent upon an omnipotent God who desired that all men should be saved, Richard Connerup surrendered his life, his abilities, and his future to serve him by carrying the gospel to the unreached people in Ethiopia. The field of Ethiopia was opened up. I went to see Dr. Donaldson. He said, uh, oh, you're too old to be a missionary. I was 29 at the time. But he always threw out a challenge like that. And then when I told him I was a bricklayer, and I, oh, he said, yeah, we, we need a builder in, in Ethiopia, so.
pioneer life was hard as the young family lived in a tent for two years while Richard was busy building houses for more incoming missionaries. We were busy building these, what we call mission stations or uh, places for the missionaries to live. The field of Ethiopia really attracted a lot of attention from the churches, from people in the churches, folks that surrendered to come missionaries and they needed places to stay. For three months, Richard was accused of treason and placed under house arrest while other nationals he had worked with were imprisoned and denied permission to sing, pray, or have a Bible. It's that many have died because of their faith for the Lord, being persecuted in these prisons and the things like this. So people have been kidnapped, are still missing. No one knows where they are. Believing God would answer his lifetime prayer to use him to start things that would be lasting for the cause of Christ, Richard remained committed to the call. Some people say that the day of the missionary is over. I don't agree with that. I can tell you today, we desperately need missionaries. Well, look at these precious people back here. If the missionary is not coming, who's going to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ? They need to know about him. The day of the missionary is not over. It's exciting to be in these foreign countries. People over there, they desperately need to hear the Word of God. The fields are still wide open, and uh, the work is, is there. I hope you enjoyed that, that trailer, that documentary. Uh, I've watched it a few times lately, and of course, you know, he's my dad, so it brings tears to my uh, eyes as I think about his ministry and a lot of the things that they went through, what my mom went through, having to send her kids to boarding school. I went in first grade, and uh, we were 12 hours away, and I saw my parents once every three months. That's not easy, especially for a mom. So you'll want to you'll make sure that you are looking for this documentary when it comes out, the third documentary of our docu-series. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Project 938. This may be the first time you're watching this, or you may not know exactly what Project 938 is all about. Well, it's really uh, after the 938 challenge that I came up with several years ago. And that 938 challenge comes from Matthew chapter 9 and verse 38. That's where we get the numbers, 938. If you remember in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, Jesus said, the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. And then in verse 38, he gave us something we can do to help remedy that situation. And he said, pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send labors into his harvest. And so the challenge then is to pray for more laborers. I believe one of the reasons why we have a shortage of laborers today, serving in our churches, serving as church planners, serving as missionaries, is because we have fewer people praying to the Lord of the harvest that he would bring or send more laborers. And so the challenge is this, set your alarm on your, on your watch, on your phones or at home, wherever it might be, to go off at 938 in the morning or 938 at night. Or like mine, it's on both. I pray every morning and I pray at night at 9.38 when, when that alarm goes off. And I say a simple prayer. Lord of the harvest, please send more laborers to the harvest. So that's the 9.38 challenge. And we've taken it and put it into Project 9.38. And so for the last years, we've made this a project that we have shared with churches in America and around the world. And so if you go to our website, uh, nine, project938.world, you'll be able to find a lot of different resources that our media department has put together. And they've, they've done a fabulous job on first-class resources. And in those resources, you'll, you'll find a design pack 
something that you can use to help promote this throughout your church. It's got banners, it's got PowerPoint slides, it's got uh, Bible study lessons, children lessons, all kinds of material resources you can use to promote this idea of praying for more laborers. Again, I believe if we have more people praying, I believe more people will answer God's call upon their lives. And so there's all those resources that are available. There are videos from missionaries. They're short videos and missionaries just saying, hey, I'm in Hong Kong and I've got, we need more missionaries here. It's a city of millions of people. Please pray that more will come to Hong Kong. Uh, and there are other missionaries from other parts of the world that are sharing the same thing. You can show those in your churches, even uh, every Sunday from here on through the end of the year. Or there are uh, videos from national pastors. Even national pastors who speak good English are sharing the need for more missionaries in their country. And so watch these videos. They're, they're really impacting, and I believe your people would enjoy them. And then on top of that, we have some new regional videos, videos of different regions, basically the different continents in the world. So they're on the Middle East and Europe and Africa, Latin America, Oceania, Asia, uh, all over the world. And these are really unique this year because we had missionaries who wrote the scripts for these videos, and then they recorded the narration. So it's a little bit of a different twist to the ones that we've had in the past. I believe you'll like them. They're new, got new footage. Uh, so show these in your churches. Show them in your Sunday school classrooms or have some friends over to your house and show them at home and uh, talk about praying for more labors. As we've been doing this for the last three years, I've been hearing reports of more people surrendering to the ministry. And that's what we're praying for. I've, in fact, just yesterday, a pastor shared that they've had more surrender in their youth department and young people for the ministry than they've had in years. And he's really excited about it. So I'm hearing that from across America. But then also pastors from around the world are sending me emails and saying, hey, Brother John, in our church this year, we've had more people surrender to missionaries, or we're getting ready to send this family out as a missionary, as our first missionary. And so we're seeing more reports like that all around the world. And that's exciting. Uh, a few months ago, I happened to be on a uh, trip, missions trip to the country of Greece. My wife and I went there with a a team of uh, from various churches, all going there to celebrate with our missionaries their new building that they had built. And uh, while we were there, we went on a on a place to sightsee, and we were on this boat going from one island to another island. And my wife and I were up on top, and we were just looking out. And my alarm went off at nine thirty eight that morning. And so my wife and I said, "Let's let's pray for more labors." And so we bowed our heads and we prayed right there for more laborers, and we included specifically for Greece. And so we stood there for a while and looked out, and then we decided to go down and sit with the people from the different churches that were there. And as we were sitting there, one of the young ladies came up and said, I need to talk to you. And I said, sure, let's, let's talk. What, well, how can I help you? And she said, I believe that God's calling me to Greece. Well, immediately I thought, wow, that's the quickest answer to a 938 prayer that I've seen. Now, the Lord had been working in her life through uh, several months up to that point. But just to tell you that God does answer our prayers. And in fact, this young lady, Sarah, she has recently been accepted into our WIN program as a missionary with the BBFI WIN program to the country of Greece. She's going to be raising her support and going to the field. So God is hearing our prayers as we pray the 938 challenge. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth labors into his harvest. Now you can go to project938.world and find out a lot more about this, see all the resources, and then eventually, uh, sometime beginning of September, you'll even see the documentary on Richard and Janine Connor up missionaries to Ethiopia and Kenya. Now, let me finish this podcast by encouraging you about the 938 Sunday that's coming up. We have set aside one Sunday every year when churches in the, across the country, across the United States and around the world come together and pray together for more laborers. This year, it's on October 1st, 2023. On October 1st, 2023, 938 Sunday, churches will be able to uh, really collectively join together 
in prayer to the Lord of the harvest to send more labors. And again, you'll have all the resources you need for that day uh, on that website or all the resources to build up to that day in your church or with your family, wherever it might be. Maybe some of your friends, get them together, your Sunday school class. But on October 1st, 2023, will be our 938 Sunday. And I hope that you'll join us as we take the time to pray for more laborers. I hope that you've enjoyed the podcast today. Uh, it's been a joy just to share about these things, and, and I really see how God is working. I hope that you'll share this with others and even subscribe and come back again and watch our next 938 podcast. Thanks for joining.